Hi everybody, this is Diana, aka Pop Culture Diva 42, and this is going to be another commentary video um, where I share my thoughts on a topic. Uh, it's going to be a superhero video. This is going to be a reply to uh, one of Ziploc Gory's videos, and you know, there goes Ziploc Gory again, uh, bringing up a topic that is utterly fascinating to me. And in his video, he does a defense of Superman and Captain America and argues why they are not pieces of American propaganda and why that should not be held against them and you know people should just give the stories a try and not um, hold it against Captain America that he is promoting some kind of pro-American message or anything like that and um, like I said, I am very uh, very thankful to Ziplagori because he brought up this topic. But um, I just thought, you know, as a foreigner, as somebody who is not from the States but who loves superheroes very much, um, I would offer my input uh, in this because this is something that I have been... Uh, I think it's like half of the reason why I'm currently doing a master's degree and um, I'm studying for a master's degree in American studies because I want to understand superheroes be better and the, uh, the superhero phenomena. The other half of it is like general pop culture stuff, but mostly it's, it's about superheroes. And every chance I get uh, in, call it in the masters to do a paper on superheroes, I always take it. And as chance would have it, I just recently did a paper on Captain America. And on his status as a symbol of the United States that has an added narrative dimension that helps its readers to internalize nationalistic discourse better. So that's my paper in a nutshell. But I'm not going to go into that. Instead, like I said, I want to, um, to give a foreigner's input on the, this idea of superheroes as American propaganda. Now, Ziploc Gori referred to Superman and Captain America alone, but uh, because their status as American symbol is ingrained in their very identity, you know, you have Captain America on one side, and you have Superman fighting for truth, justice, and the American way on the other side. But I'm going to go a little broader, I'm going to talk about superheroes in general. Now like I said, I'm a foreigner that loves superheroes, but as a foreigner, I am very aware that they are quintessentially American symbols, okay? They are American pop culture icons. And this, um, this is my theory, but I think that only a culture like American culture, with its roots firmly planted into liberalism, could have come up with them. And only a civilization like America, like the American civilization that basically revolutionized the concept of mass culture and popular culture could have taken these characters and marketed them to the whole planet. Now let's talk about liberalism. I love talking about liberalism. Liberal liberalism is this thing that came out of the Renaissance in Europe. And what it basically said is that, you know, fuck the church, fuck the king, the individual is awesome. The individual is born with certain inalienable rights and he is more than capable of making his own decisions and taking control of his own life. Now you have people like Thomas Hobbes and John Locke preaching that shit and then you have the Declaration of Independence going on about the right to life, liberty and the pursuit of happen happiness, yes? So you have this entire nation built on an individualist liberal premise that individuals can do anything. And what are superheroes? They are individuals that have conquered the laws of physics. These are people who went up to nature and said, you're my bitch. Now, other cultures in the world don't really think like that. Because nobody, no other culture in the world started out thinking we're the shit. Now, I'm from Romania. Now, people have been living in this territory for thousands of years. Nowhere in that time did my people or my great 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 ancestors ever think we are the shit. Our thing has always been, okay, how do we not get our asses kicked? So going back to superheroes, like I said, they are quintessentially American. But are they propaganda? 
No. But what they are is basic marketing 101. Now, some people some time ago, like 80 years or something, um, who owned a publishing house said, you know, what do people want? How do we get them to buy our stories? Well, they want to feel special. How do we achieve that? We give them stories about people being uber special and make them care about the characters and make them identify with the characters so they will vicariously live the illusion of controlling their destinies and even controlling nature. Now you market that, you put some pretty colors in it, you put some action, you put some romance, and then you sell it to millions of people all over the world. But guess what? Not every culture wants their people to feel special. Either because it would be a fucking lie to begin with, or because that's just stupid and some people might actually jump out of a building thinking they can fly like Superman and then you have to bury his ass and then, you know, clean the blood off the cement block where he landed and, you know, nobody wants to deal with that shit. Now, I love some superheroes. By some twist of fate, I've come to love superheroes and their stories, but, you know, I believe that you can't, you know, you can't be an adequate judge of yourself until you see yourself from somebody else's eyes. And at the same time, you can't really judge your own culture or your symbols till you see them through somebody else's eyes who happens to not share them. Now, Zip makes the point at some t uh, makes the point um, sometime in his video that you know if Captain America would have been born in Japan instead of the United States, he still would have been the same person. And there is Zip as a black glory goes, proving my point about the cult of the individual because when you say stuff like that or when somebody says says stuff like that I interpret it as what you're basically saying is that the individual can rise above his or her own culture background and they can't I think that is impossible you cannot separate who you are from your culture now if Captain America would have been born in Japan in the Second World War he would have been a kamikaze pilot is that simple you know, um, what? because all that stuff I mentioned earlier about liberalism and whatnot, that didn't happen in Japan. It never happened there. It happened in Europe. Now, I'm not saying that Japan is some third world country or they're primitive. N not at all. What I'm saying is that they're very, 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 very different from the United States. And individuals in Japan relate to the world and to the collective in very different ways. So like I said, you cannot separate an individual from his or her cultural background. That doesn't mean that you don't make your own decisions, that doesn't mean that you don't live your own life, but what it means is that the story of you is much bigger than just the 25, 30, 40, 50 years that you've lived on this planet. You know, the story of you is the story of your parents and your grandparents and your great-great-grandparents and like thousands of people over millennia that have lived and died and worked their asses off so that they put your ass into the world. You know, and when you think like that, you know, you think, well, the least I owe these people <laughs> is to be a good person. You know?